Am Yisrael Chai. Okay, my friends, my friends, for the past few decades, the American Jewish community has known a true lion of Judah, a man who is, on the outside he is flesh, but inside he is pure steel. You have to believe me because I've encountered that steel on more than one occasion. Mort Klein, the head of the COA, the, the country's oldest pro-Israel organization, is a man who will never back down. He is a modern Mordechai. Lo yichra, lo yishtachave. He will never bend, he will never bow, he will never curtsy, he will only ever fight. You know, I was with Mord for Passover. We were both speakers at a program. Everyone was happy, it was a beautiful place, and he walked over to me looking so anxious and upset. And he said, Shmuley, the state of Israel and the Jewish people shakes me to my core. And I said, Mort, let's go get them. And here we are, Mort, seeing our dream realized. Mort, you are an inspiration to me. You are the elder statesman of American Jewish fighters for the Jewish state. We all love you. We are all in awe of you. We all look up to you. Ladies and gentlemen, President of the Zionist Organization of America, the one and the only keynote speaker for today, Mort Klein. We need more people like you. We need wow. more people like you. Shmuley, I want you to give my eulogy when I leave this earth. But could you write it out so I can enjoy it while I'm still here? Thank you all so much for showing your love and support for Eretz Israel. The Italian Americans love the Italian state of Israel. The Irish Americans love the Irish state of Ireland. The French Americans love the French state of France. And we Jewish Americans love the sovereign Jewish state of Eretz Israel. We are the indigenous Jewish people in our homeland, given to us by God Almighty in the Bible, the Balfour Declaration, and numerous international and U.S. resolutions and laws. We are proud Zionists. We love Israel. That's all a Zionist is. A Zionist is simply someone who acknowledges the right of the Jews to have the one tiny Jewish state smaller than New Jersey. The Muslims have over 50 Muslim countries. The Arabs have over 22 Arab countries. And the radical bigots and Jew haters on campuses and elsewhere proclaim that we Jews can't even have one tiny state. Israel is so small. On the maps, you can't see the word Israel on the land of Israel. It has to be put in the Mediterranean Sea. There's no room to put that word outside of Israel. And to this minute, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> there has never been a country, never been a country called Palestine. It was a region. Yeah. 2,000 yeah. years ago, <laughs> Palestine was known as Judea and Samaria, the homeland of the Jewish people, run by people like King David and King Solomon. When the Romans invaded the Jewish state of Judea and they massacred 600,000 Jews, they renamed Judea and Samaria after our enemy, the Philistines, Philistinia. So Palestine is a Roman name. It's not an Arab name, and the Palestinians can't even pronounce the letter P. So how can they say this is the ancient homeland of the Arabs when it's named after Romans? It's all a lie! The Arabs are from Arabia, the Jews are from Judea. There has never been any Palestinian kings or queens. In fact, until the late 60s, until the late 60s, Everyone knew that Palestine meant the Jewish homeland, that Palestinians meant Jews. I'm Israel Chai! So what about this phony chant? Free, free Palestine. What about this phony chant? Let me tell you something. Gaza has two million Arabs in Gaza. Since 2005, 
It was a free, free place. There were no Jews there, no IDF there. In 2005, Hamas terrorists were elected to run Gaza by 80% of the Gaza civilians. They are not innocent civilians. They put Hamas in power. No, they are not innocent civilians. No, they are and not. And Abbas's Palestinian Authority <laughs> is also free. They control 40% of Judea and Samaria. So both Gaza and the Palestinian Authority have their own parliament, their own schools, textbooks, TV, radio, newspapers, their own police, their own businesses. In Gaza and Judea and Samaria, the Arabs rule over 99% of the Palestinian Arabs. Israel is only involved in security in Judea and Samaria. So ladies and gentlemen, listen to what I'm going to say. There is no occupation. Another lie. There is no occupation. I don't hear Biden speaking about the fact they pay, they pay lifetime, lifetime pensions to murder Jews. And if you're killed, their family gets a lifetime pension. Abbas spends $400 million a year to pay Arabs to murder Jews. And they put posters of these Jew killers to name schools and streets after them. They honor them. Biden must go! Biden must go! Biden must go! And let me tell you, in the last 80 years, the Arabs have been offered a state eight times. In the last 40 years, they've been offered a state twice. Why have they not accepted it? Because each time they're required to say, we accept Israel as a Jewish state, they refuse to do it. Otherwise, they would have had a state a, a very, very long time ago. Uh, clearly, the Palestinian war against Israel is not about statehood, it's not about land, it's about the destruction of Israel. No wonder over 90% of the Palestinian Arabs in a recent poll support the massacre, rape, and torture of 1,200 Jews on October 7th. They danced in the streets, they handed out can candy. These Gaza Palestinians are not innocent civilians. They're no, guilty no, of supporting no, Hamas. No, 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 not innocent. Not They're not innocent. They're not innocent. They're not innocent. bigoted monsters on campuses. When they say, we are Hamas, globalized the terror war against the Jews, F the Jews and worse, what are these ignorant fools saying on campuses? They're really saying, we are Nazis, we are the Ku Klux Klan, we are the brown shirts, we are rapists, we murder gays and all women's rights we oppose, and we oppose all abortions, because they are supporting the belief system of Hamas. So shame on these low-life morons. morons. My recommendation to the presidents of these universities, arrest, 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 expel, 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 bring in the National Guard. We have to expel these students. Deport, 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 deport. So, why is it critical for Israel to destroy Hamas after 35,000 rockets since 2005? October 7th was not the beginning. It's, this was the termination of 35,000 rockets since 2005. Is Israel in Gaza for revenge? No. They are there because no Israeli will be able to live in South Israel or Northern Israel with Hezbollah and Hamas in power. Hundreds of thousands of Israelis, people don't know this, hundreds of thousands of Israelis in southern Israel and northern Israel have left their homes, living in hotels, other people's homes, and in tents. We must destroy Hamas and destroy Hezbollah. Destroy Hamas, destroy Hamas, destroy Hamas, destroy Hamas. An innocent outrage. Biden, 
is defending and protecting Hamas by demanding, demanding Israel not go into Rafah and destroy the final four Hamas battalions. Biden is helping Hamas survive. We have to destroy them. If Israel doesn't go into Rafah, and they will, Hamas could regroup in three to five months. This will enhance their image, inspire more terrorism. This will strengthen Iran, inspire uh, uh, more Hamas shouts on campus. Uh, uh, and by the way, I believe what Biden is doing, saying don't go into Rafah, uh, is not because of elections. It is not because of Michigan. He, Biden, has been hostile to Israel since the first day of his presidency. Before Michigan was a twinkle in his eye, he's been hostile. <laughs> Every appointment that he's made that offends Israel is an anti-Israel person. He has praised Rashida Tlaib, he's praised Omar. <laughs> he has given Iran from day one $26 billion, and he's ignored sanctions on Iran, which has enabled them to make between 50 and 100 billion more. <laughs> President Biden has helped fund Hamas and Hezbollah by funding Hamas. Yes! Biden has funded Hamas. Shame, shame on Biden, absolutely. Shame, shame, shame. And since day one, he's had the head of Egypt at the White House, the head of Jordan, the head of other Arab countries at the White House. Who has he refused to come to the White House since day one before Michigan? Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, has never been allowed to be in the White House. And let me say something else. It is an outrage that Senator Chuck Schumer, do you remember him? in the country of our greatest ally, Israel. Israel is a sovereign democratic country who has had more elections than we do. Senator Schumer, leave Israel's elections alone. Leave Israel's elections alone. Leave Israel's elections alone. Leave Israel's elections alone. And Senator Schumer says, my criticism is of Netanyahu. It's not of Israel, it's Netanyahu. Well, Netanyahu, that simply is following the will of 85% of the people. They, the Israeli people want Hamas destroyed and reject a Palestinian terrorist state. So Netanyahu is just doing what Israel wants. If you condemn Netanyahu, you're condemning the will of the Israeli people. Senator Schumer, stop condemning Netanyahu. Why don't you finally condemn the anti-Semitic radicals, Omar and Slave and AOC, and not Democratic elected Prime Minister of Israel. And we must uh, we must fight shame on Schumer. We must fight the insanity of a ceasefire. There is no ceasefire in wars. There was no ceasefire during the Civil War, World War I, World War II. You fight and fight until you destroy the evil enemy. You don't let Hamas rest, regroup, and rearm. You fight to the finish. You fight until victory. You fight until victory. You fight until victory. You fight until victory. Biden, hands off Israel. 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 These ignorant people on campuses, half are students, half are not, they're saying Israel's committing genocide. Genocide? In 1948, there were 150,000 Arabs in the Israel area. Today, there's two million. Whoever's in charge of the genocide program must be fired immediately. It's not working. Professor John Spencer of West Point said Israel has the lowest ratio of civilians dying compared to combatants, one to one, the lowest ratio in history. In our American war against Iraq, it was 10 to one. We killed 10 times as many civilians as combatants. We killed 400,000 civilians in Iraq and Afghanistan 
and nobody said a word. No Biden Jew, then no was, silent, was silent. No, 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 and yesterday, the United Nations acknowledged that there's less than half as many civilians killed as the Hamas lying terrorists have proclaimed. Less than half as many. And what about this nonsense of apartheid? Israeli Arabs have the identical rights as Israeli Jews. There's 10% of the Knesset are Arabs. They're Arab judges. There's an Arab on the Supreme Court. Half the doctors at Adas Hospital are Arabs. 20% of the students at universities are Arabs. This was never the case in South Africa. You ignorant, stupid, moronic, low-life students. Stop lying about Israel. Stop lying about Israel. Stop lying about Israel. Stop lying. Start telling the truth about the Hamas Nazis. The truth about the Hamas Nazis. But with all the difficulties and challenges, we have to thank God for Israel's extraordinarily talented and committed young IDF soldiers who dropped, who dropped everything. They left their jobs, their families to protect Israel. Jews have driven for hours from their homes down to the south to fight the Arab terrorists. The young people of Israel were tested, and the young people of Israel responded with extraordinary magnificence. They are heroes. I will end. We Jews, we Jews overcame the Amalekites, the Romans, the Hamans, the Crusades, the Pogromists, the Nazis. We will overcome these despicable Hamas Nazis just like we've overcome all the other horrible enemies of Israel throughout the sages. We Jews arose from the onslaughts throughout the Middle Ages and from pogroms in the 1800s. We arose from the ashes of Auschwitz to recreate our beautiful state of Israel in 48. That is the lesson of our history, that the indomitable spirit of the Jews, with our belief in ourselves, and our culture, and our talent, and our Torah, and an almighty God, we can never be destroyed. For God promised we would be an eternal people. And unlike politicians, God doesn't break his promises. 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 So the miracle of a Jewish state, due to a loving miraculous victory against great odds, a victory in 1948 over 40 million Arabs, where Jews were vastly outnumbered, yes, they overcame. We have many more miracles that will occur that we can't even begin to, to know about. In every generation, as the Passover Haggadah foresees, the enemies will always rise up against us. Each time we will overcome our enemies and prevail. We will always emerge as we have emerged, stronger to rebuild, become stronger and stronger than ever. Amen, so amen, we have to amen, know, amen. we all here amen. came out for this important rally. We must be strong as Jews and as friends of the Jewish people. We must not be afraid, for God is with us. The cause of Israel is moral. The cause of Israel is just. We must act and speak out with courage. Truth and justice and God are on the side of Israel. With your help, with the strength and the will of the Israeli people, with the help of the Israeli Defense Forces, with the help of Almighty God, new miracles we can't foresee will occur, and the people of Israel will dwell in their holy land for eternity. We will prevail. Thank you very much.